In this video, we're taking a look at DeFi Alarma, a free resource that you can use to make better informed decisions. I'm gonna show you the top five features I like to look at, and maybe you can use these for your own toolkit. Like and subscribe, comment down below if you find this type of content interesting and helpful, and let's jump in. When you first enter the website defilama.com, what you're presented with is a lot of information, maybe information overload for many. You got the TVL here of the crypto space, showing you what a bubble we went through and how it's just recently fallen off a cliff. And then we've got information around the highest ranking protocols. How much volume are they doing? Is it up, is it down? And what is the TVL, the total value locked in each of these protocols? How many chains are they connected to? And I think this is quite overwhelming. So let's try and break this down, just going through the specific features I like to use, as most of this on here will just be noise for the vast majority of users. Now over here on the left hand side of the screen, this is the directory you want to be going through and just checking out various items on here to see what you like or dislike. Obviously I'll show you my top five, but each to their own, some people are interested in different things. You can also see the new tab for new features just added by DeFi Llama. Now these guys are innovating all the time, adding these new features, which is very handy indeed as we know a lot of the blockchain analytics companies out there charge hefty fees think the likes of Nansen etc and so learning how to use these free features is just going to be another string to your bow so the first thing I like to look at on a regular basis is these stables down here so this is to do with stable coins I'm going to go on to overview well this ugly chart to your right hand side is a little bit confusing let's just go on the drop down menu and tick total market cap so this is a feature I look at quite a lot, at least on a weekly basis. This essentially is telling us how much liquidity is in the crypto space in the form of dollars, crypto dollars, stable coins. So currently there's 142 billion stable coins in the system total. Now just below this, you can see the seven day change. There is a 1% reduction in stable coin liquidity over the last seven days. This means money is draining out of the crypto ecosystem. This is a really good sign for, are we in a bull market or a bear market? Are we likely to go up or down from here? As you can see, a liquidity drain is definitely a negative thing. And so we can kind of expect lower prices. We've also got USDT dominance. That is the most dominant stablecoin being used by crypto participants. Now on the right hand side, we have this chart. The blue line is the total TVL of stablecoins and the red line is the actual market cap. So the red line is the one you wanna focus on more as TVL is essentially showing you when this diverges away, a lot of people are levering up their stablecoin positions to borrow more stables and go long on coins. And this is what happens. Everyone was going super, super long here, levering up to the tits. And eventually we then have this crash around June time with the three hours capital liquidation. But what we can see from this is the red line peaks out at somewhere around 190 billion stable coins in the crypto ecosystem. So now what we're looking for is how sticky is this going to be? We can see there's a net drainage over time. We were at 150 billion at the end of September. Fast forward almost one month, we're now towards $142 billion. So essentially this is telling us over the last 30 days, $7 billion worth of stables have exited the crypto markets. If you're interested in seeing the breakdown of these various stable coins, you can go down here. This may be helpful as, you know, some of these protocols will have the ability to actually make revenue off the back of these coins being minted. Think LUSD as an example, or maybe FRAX with FRAX shares. And so tracking this data can be helpful for investment decisions, but also you can see things like during panic, people moving out of USDT, moving into USDC and vice versa. But one last thing to show you on here, on the drop down, there is a USD inflows button. Like the previous chart, this is just gonna give us a more detailed breakdown of is money flowing in or out? net liquidity inflows or outflows from the system. And as you can see, since around this point, huge outflows around here, and generally there's been more outflows than inflows. So more than one ways to skin a cat there, but we can see there is a net drainage of liquidity in the crypto space right about now. Now, the second thing to look at here is liquidations. This is something I think is very, very handy indeed. We can see the liquidation points of many crypto assets. There is a platform out there called Highblock, which has a subscription service, but as I 
say, many people can't afford this, so we can just use the on-chain data provided by DeFi Llama here to look at liquidation points that are maybe quite substantial. So here it is currently on ETH. You can change this to your favorite altcoin or whatever you want to do. Uh, but what we're going to do is actually have a look at the ETH liquidation points here, which is a rather handy thing to see. So we have $1.5 billion worth liquidatable ETH in dollar denominated value here. There's also a cool metric. There's around $65 million within a 20% move of the current price action. And this chart here shows you the dollar levels at which liquidations will occur. So if there's some big spikes like this one here, at around 715 bucks, a total of 270,000 ETH would be liquidated if the price goes down there. Scrolling down, we can also see the biggest open positions, what protocol they're on, and their value in US dollars. Then further to the right, we have the liquidation price point for these. So most of these are maker vaults or on Aave or compounds, some of the big hitters on the ETH ecosystem. These will be managed positions. So if prices do start to fall down, you can expect these liquidation prices to start going down as people add more collateral to their positions to try and manage things. So if ETH does go down to 537 bucks, we can't guarantee that this $75 million worth of collateral will be liquidated. As a margin call gets closer, people will add collateral to these. But this is a good way to see what are the kind of levels at which people are maybe going to be hunting for to try and get some liquidations. This is very much a PVP market right now out here. And so we can expect there's a potential for some of these liquidations to be hunted. At this point in time, nothing to really write home about above $1,000, but definitely a feature worth monitoring because the potential, if we do get to some of these levels of cascading liquidations becomes even greater you're joking not another one oh for god's sake i can't honestly i can't stand this now the third tab to show you is this one DeFi. on here there is a load of information we can see the biggest protocols the ones with the highest tvl we can see the chains and how much tvl they have how many users they have how many platforms are on there and a whole load more but what i think is quite interesting for this one is the airdrops page. As we know, airdrops, the amount of threads you've probably seen on Twitter is a little bit sickening and everyone seems to be after this free form of money. So how do you find these airdrops? Well, DeFi Llama has our back here. So this is showing us all of the protocols or chains that currently do not have a token, but are active, i.e. they have TVL, they have protocols that are working. They essentially have a business model. So on here, you can come over and start doing a little bit of research into each of these and maybe find out their social links. If we just go onto one, say this one here, I've never used this one before. It looks pretty tiny in my opinion, but if you just scroll down, you can see protocol information, the website, their Twitter page, see if they're active, drop into their Discord, ask a few questions. Is there a potential airdrop? And so if you are trying to airdrop hunt this is a good web page for that there's also a cool feature here where you can filter by chain so if we just clear them all then maybe add some of the newer layer 2 protocols here for example arbitrum we can then see the protocols that are live on arbitrum that do not yet have tokens and if i was a betting man i would suggest that maybe some of these may be the narratives to go and look at next up let's have a look at some yields so the yield tab which has a percentage sign next to it just click on that and we can start to see a load of drop down here. Essentially, first and foremost, this is going to show you a load of protocols that have yield attached to them. For example, Lido, Maker, JustLend. And it's going to give you some vague information about what you can yield on these various protocols. But this is rather confusing. So what I would do is drill this down into what do you actually want to look for here? There is also a search function at the top. Maybe you want to search by token or my favorite, which we'll jump into, will be stablecoin pools, as a lot of people are just holding stables right now. There's also the lowest risk delta neutral strategies to more high risk leverage lending that has just been added to this. So whatever tickles your fancy, if you're going to be a bit more rational or maybe a degen, go and check out these, but we're going to jump into stablecoin pools. So as it says, tracking over 9,000 pools across 200 protocols, pretty crazy stuff. Now, what this is going to show you is in TVL order. So the most TVL locked into these platforms, which stablecoin pool is attracting the most money. Now, of course, with this is going to come a low APY. If loads of people are in here, then there's a high chance there's not going to be a lot of money to be had. As you can see, stablecoin yields are down massively, down to roughly 1%. We were easily getting 10% plus during the bull market and then some on certain protocols. So what information is here? Well, on the left-hand side, you have the pool. So you have the two stablecoin assets or the one, depending 
depending on if this is a single sided pool or an LP position. So this one, the most popular is DAI to USDC and the project it's on is the protocol of Curve. This is on the Ethereum main net. It has 269 mil in TVL. We then have the APY slot. What is the annualized percentage yield on this? This is made up of a base APY. So this will be the fees, the swap fees accrued by this position and then any booster rewards. So this would be in the CRV token. This plus this equals this right here. So I know what you're thinking. Why are we not just going to the max APY and jumping straight into this pool? Well, with anything, the higher the reward, the higher the risk. Some of these, for example, damn finance, I've never heard of before. There's only $1 million in TVL on here and the APY is a eye-watering 30%. Then you can see the base APY is next to nothing. The rewards are coming in a form of token. Even more sketchy to the left-hand side, there's an actual airdrop icon here and it says the project has no token, but it might airdrop to depositors in the future. Sounds like a bit of a risky strategy, in my opinion. The second one down though, we do see this, USDC to DEI. D -E -I. This is a stablecoin on the Phantom Network. So this is on Beethoven, another Phantom project, and has almost 10 mil in TVL on here. As you can see, base rewards very low, and the APY being boosted by Beats itself. So if you click into this, it then takes you to the page to show you all the information on this, some more stats. What is the base reward and APY? And how has this moved over the last seven days? Is it down only and highly unsustainable? Or is there a bit of a bottoming out here? And is the APY being sustained by some means? This is where your due diligence is going to have to come in if we just keep scrolling down there's a website page down here and also their twitter profile as a bare minimum go and look at these in detail you just really want to make sure you are not being rug pulled on any of these protocols which of course is a big issue in the crypto space DeFi llama can't be held accountable for the security of the smart contracts that these guys are all deploying it's just aggregating all the information for us then last but certainly not least we're going to look at the fees slash revenue tab so this is one of the hot topics in crypto right now, real yield. And as we can see from this, it gives you a list of the highest ranking amount of fees taken by either protocols or projects themselves. So we have the Ethereum mainnet, the actual ETH layer one itself, actually doing 1.5 mil in 24 hour fees. But second here is a project GMX, the perpetual swap. I did a full video on this, check it out. I'll leave it at the end of this video. And that single project is doing more in 24 hour fees than the whole of the BSC blockchain itself. Again, from here, you can go through your favorite chains, see what the outperformers are on these various chains, and maybe conduct some research into why these various platforms are doing huge 24 hour fees. GMX certainly looks like an outlier here between Ethereum and BSC. So let's jump into this one. So on the left hand side, we have the fees taken and then how much of these fees are the actual revenue. So imagine this as kind of the gross versus the net. Then what you may want to do if you're interested in maybe capturing some of these fees is understanding more about this protocol, which DeFi Llama can't really help you with directly from here. But what you can do is find the website of GMX. From here, I would suggest going into the docs page and looking up the tokenomics. Now I've already done this. I know a bit about GMX. Essentially, what happens is they have two coins. They have GMX, the staking token, and GLP. Now, GMX gets 30% of all platform revenues, and GLP gets 70% of all platform revenues. So from this, you can pretty much calculate GMX stakers are getting almost 100 grand per day distributed, and GLP stakers are getting almost 250K in revenue distributed to their pool. So in this circumstance, you can see it's obviously lucrative to be involved within this ecosystem system and the chart is pretty much showing us that over time the amount of fees taken and revenue is growing and growing and growing. This indicates to me at least that DeFi is being preferred here to maybe centralized entities and utilizing ways to trade on chain is definitely becoming more and more popular. The data is speaking for itself here. So I hope this served as a useful introduction to DeFi Llama and some of the stats I really like to dig into on a weekly basis as I feel this just keeps me in touch with what's happening on the crypto scene. Make sure you check out DeFi Llama. I'll leave a link down below. These guys are making moves in the bear market and more and more features. They're adding like a news page coming soon. So arrival to Cointelegraph, Coindesk, etc. So with that said and done, I hope you enjoyed this one. Like the video. If you want to see more of these kind of things, drop me a comment as to what you need to see and I'll be happy to oblige. See you in the next one. Peace.
未来のことも思っちゃダメ大丈夫かなああ不安になってくるでしょならば一生懸命一つのところに命を懸けるそうだ今ここを生きていけばみんな生き生きするぞ